name of the Lord, friends and families all over the world, welcome to a new year. This is going to be 2023. Happy, happy new year to our friends and families all over the world watching us right now. It's going to be the start of another ODP and we'll welcome you especially to a new year. Welcome. Happy New Year. It's going to be a great year of accelerated supernatural exaltation uh, following with the prophetic word that we started that God showed us last year. Uh, we saw little tips of uh, supernatural lifting up in our camp by the grace of God. We expect God to do more of those kind of actions in our lives in 2023. So please stay on board if you're watching this program for the very first time. Or if you're watching this program over and over again, stay on board with this program. Stay on board with the instructions over there. And those instructions, just like the kingdom of the Lord, uh, are designed to have no end in their impact and positive impacts in your story by the grace of God. Based on that, God's going to be lifting us, lifting us up by the grace of God. So happy new year. Welcome to 2023 ODP. Glory to God. This is Church at Hero Smart, and Hero Smart is a ministry set up by God for the discipleship of nations in keeping with the instruction of Yahushua. In Matthew chapter 28, which says, Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you to do, and surely I will be with you till the end of the age. And in trying to keep this instruction, as um, I mean, lots of you know, God's given us the great privilege to create this resource that we call the Online Discipleship Program, or the ODP in short which is going to be a set of teachings, which may be sectioned into five major categories. The pharmacy section of the word, the milk section of the word, the meat section of the word, the water section of the word, and combination meals. And we're getting started right now with another ODP series in 2023. We're going to be starting with the pharmacy aspect of it, with the very first message over there, which is going to be week number one, defeating negative addictions. Now, why are we doing the ODP? So this is the beginning of the ODP, so it behooves us to put our eyes on the reason for the ODP, right? <laughs> so let's turn to the book of Matthew real quickly. Turn to the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 28. You are going to see the reason we got to do this multiple times over. And we'll keep doing it, stirring ourselves up in the name of Jesus, in the faith, until Yahushua returns by his grace and mercy. Matthew chapter 28. Let's take a look at it. This is the reason for the ODP in verse 16. Matthew chapter 28 and verse 16. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain, where Jesus had told them to go. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I commanded you to do, and surely I will be with you till the end of the age. So do you see over there that that instruction of Jesus, which the body of Christ has come to call the Great Commission, and rightfully so, has at least two parts to it. The first part is going to be, go ahead and make disciples of all nations. Well, that's going to be the overarching objective. I want you guys to go get, get me a bunch of disciples. And how would we do that, Lord? It says you've got to baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and then teaching them to obey. So Yahushua's objective is, well, go ahead and get me a bunch of people who are going to have my discipline. The word disciple over there is a derivative of the word that we can call discipline. In other words, you're going to have a discipline, the lifestyle of the master. And to be able to do that, you've got to help them to get born again, which is what being baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit is going to entail, and then teaching them to obey. So those two critical parts of discipleship are going to be important, and they need to be given equal weights of emphasis in the body of Christ. Uh, but unfortunately, it's, it's been lopsided for uh, X number of years. For the past uh, couple of years, it's been, well, go ahead and get people baptized and get them born again. Go, go, go eat. And that's important. That's okay. But if you neglect the second aspect of it, which is going to teach them how to obey the Word of God, 
you can inadvertently make them to be twice the children of hell as you are. Oh, uh, that heat's a little hard. Well, I'm sorry, I'm just talking like Jesus right now. Because without teaching, you're going to find out that the so-called people, they get converted, but they can't leave a testimony of the person they mouth as Lord. Because teaching is important. And you know that if you don't get to teach something, then people are just going to learn it. And how many people know that there's a lot to learn, especially about the lifestyle of Jesus, the lifestyle of the person we call Yahushua, the Lord, the Lord is the King of Kings. In those 33 years that he lived over there, he had a lot of things that he did on purpose in his lifestyle, which if we are negligent, we are not going to get his result. Well, bless the name of the Lord. Some of us are getting his results <laughs> by the grace of God. But we're getting his result not because we're superhumans. We're getting his result because we are following after his discipline, his lifestyle. You caught away the discipline of the master away from my life or from your life or from anybody's life. You will see that there's really nothing good about you. Wow, how can you say that? Well, I can say that because Jesus himself said that. One man came to him in the Gospels and said, Good teacher, what can I do to inherit eternal life? And Yahushua said, Well, why are you calling me good? There is nobody good but God, including himself. So he acknowledged the fact that what's making him good is the fact that he understands how to connect with certain principles that are inside the Father. In other words, connecting with God factors is what's going to make him good. Well, the same thing is going to be true of you. So if Yahushua says he's going to be evil without a God factor, <laughs> how much more you? You're going to be double evil or triple evil. How much more me? I'll be quadruple evil without a God factor. That's the reason it's important to follow after the discipline of the master. We call that discipleship. Now, many people in the body of Christ don't think like that. And it's not going to be surprising why the testimony of the body is like this. So you look around, your brothers and sisters all around, and <laughs> you can see testimonies and shambles. And the courtesy of the incomplete lucrum gospel that they've been fed, they think everything is okay with me so long as I mouth Jesus. Well, that's not what this program is going to teach you. This program is going to teach you how to sustain the status of perfect obedience, living completely with pleasing to the Father, but not by your powers, not through your prowess, but through the discipline of the person that we call Yahushua, who was tempted in every way just because we are, and yet he was without sin. For over 33 years, he walked the dirty streets of this planet, and he never fell into treason. That's the reason he's the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, the only person who had a testimony over here on the side of eternity. And God's not a respect to a person. See, Jesus was given the grace and the ability to, to do that. He must have been doing something right. So we made it our kernel in this program to start to ask Yahushua, Sir, what did you do right to have this testimony? Hallelujah. And until we get this testimony, no, we're not going to stop. We're going to keep on finding out and getting additional details about the grace of God. He's been faithful. He has been faithful to teach us through the agency of His Spirit and the Holy Spirit by the grace of God. So that's the reason teaching is important, number one. Another reason we got to go through the ODP multiple times over is because we don't see the Word of God as simply a dissemination of information to people. The teaching of the Word of God is not necessarily just trying to pass the knowledge of mathematics across to you, or you're trying to pass some secular information across to you. No. The Word of God goes beyond intellectual curiosity. The Word of God is food for your spirit. And just like in the natural, you keep eating the same thing that you, you're used to eating over and over and over again. Not necessarily because you're trying to sample something new. Uh, but because you know that if you eat, you're going to get the needed energy to carry on and do your activities, to do your chores, and do whatever God's calling you to do. So you keep on eating again. You can go ahead and go ahead. In fact, in my house, we have a, a timetable, a food timetable. So we know that today, this is what we're going to eat for breakfast. This is what we're going to eat for lunch. We know that automatically. And we enjoy it, even though we've eaten it like 122 times in a year. We go back and we eat the same thing. 
Well, the same thing is going to be true with the Word of God. We're going to come back and go through week number one, DNA, the fifth negative addictions. Week number two, three, four, TOS series. We're going to talk about the milk of the word, the meat of the word, one section of the word coming. We're going to talk about all of those again, methodically. Why? Because we are trying to get food and nutrition for our spirits. And we classify the set of teachings based on the understanding God's given us into five major categories, which we call the pharmacy section of the word, milk section of the word, meat section of the word, water section of the word, and combination milk. So really, really important. We're going to be talking about all of that. So um, right off the bat, since we are getting started right now with the ODP in 2023, that's important that we get grounded in the reason we're doing this. We're doing this predominantly because of the great commission. Yahushua says, go ahead and teach how to obey. If you don't teach how to obey, you're not going to be obedient. And I don't care how sophisticated you may look in between those words, you're just not going to do it. Because the person who was obedient, he was taught how to obey. You're going to see that scripture. I understand that. And then secondly, I understand the reason we've got to go through the ODP multiple times over is because predominantly it's the food for our spirits. You get starved sufficiently of the nutrients that come from the ODP. You will be ungodly. Period. Oh, but I can find it out myself. That's fine. Go ahead and find it out by yourself. You don't necessarily have to subscribe to what I call the ODP. But you study through the Bible and you come up with your ODP. You come up with your discipleship program and classified for your house or whatever. Make sure you go through that every year. Because that's what's going to strengthen your heart by the grace of God. <laughs> but why go take, take yourself through trying to get started with another program where it's given to you free of charge in the year? If I knew this 30-some uh, years ago, I mean, I'll be further along the road right now. <laughs> I just stumbled on this uh, through a series of questions and out of frustrations uh, with what I've seen on the, on the outside in the body of Christ, to start crying out to God. Something, something's got to be logical, Lord. Can, can you explain to me the, the logic of the complete gospel message? Step outside of tens of traditions and God, God gave us ODP. Can take it and use it, you know. <laughs> Glory to God. So that's what we are about. It's going to be 2023 ODP, and the ODP is all about the Great Commission. The Great Commission is what we read in Matthew chapter 28, from verse 18 to 20, is the discipleship of the nations. It is going to include two things, helping people to be born again. When we're talking about being born again right now, we're talking about the recreation of your spirit. It's not a physical rebirth. The unbelievers, they, they have no clue what we're talking about. Born again? <laughs> this is like Nicodemus back in the... Okay, let's turn to it. This is where we got the term from. It's in the book of John, in John chapter 3. This is the words. These are the words of Jesus himself telling us, you've got to be born again. Hallelujah. There's no questions about it. You've got to be born again. All right, John chapter 3 and in verse 1. Take a look at it. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Yahushua at night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher from God, and no one could perform, for no one could perform the miraculous signs you are doing if God were not with him. Wow, that's a deep statement over there. I wish some of our preachers can know this deeply over there. So for you to do miraculous signs on the outside, you want supernatural actions, you need God's approval. Mm. We call that righteousness pushing over there. <laughs> but in reply, Yahushua, Yahushua replied and declared, I tell you the truth, no one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. You see that? He is born again. And then Nicodemus was confused about that. He says, how can he be born when he is whole? Nicodemus asked. Surely he cannot enter a second time into his mother's womb to be born. Idiot. This is not talking about physical birth. <laughs> and Yahushua answered him, I tell you the truth, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born of water and of spirit. And some of our brothers are going to think he's being baptized in water. He's talking about. No, he's being born of spiritual water. That's what Jesus taught. For flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying you must be born again. 
The wind blows wherever it, it pleases. You hear it sound. You cannot tell where it's coming from or where it's going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. How can this be? Nicodemus asked. You are a teacher in Israel, said Jesus. And you do not understand these things? I tell you the truth. We speak of what we know and we testify of what we've seen. Well, still you people do not believe our testimony. Yahushua says what I'm talking about is... All right, God says I should keep on reading. I have spoken to you of earthly things and you do not believe. How then will you believe if I speak of heavenly things? No one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven, the Son of Man. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the desert, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only and begotten Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Yahushua starts to break it down for Brother Nicodemus over there that you got to be born again. And what I'm talking about being born again is not a natural rebirth. I'm talking about a spiritual rebirth. In other words, your spirit has to be recreated. Because ever since the age of accountability, when you started exercising yourself in actions of disobedience and treason against the living God, you died as a consequence of that. So even though you're walking in your body, you sever a connection with your creator. That's the meaning of die spiritually. You're not sensitive to things of God. I wasn't sensitive to things of God ever since the age of accountability. Prior to the time that I got born again, God couldn't reach out to me through my conscience. Why? Because treason blocked it. And that's what happened to all humanity. The Word of God says we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Romans chapter 3. Now that's the reason we got to be reborn spiritually. Now that birth, that is called being born again spiritually is going to be something that your eyes cannot see but you are going to feel the impact of a change on the inside you're going to see that you don't feel like doing all those nasty things anymore you're going to see that anytime you disobey god your conscience feels we feel bad about it and our believers going to disobey god they, they don't care they're going to go ahead and do it again two times over because their hearts aren't they're dead in their transgressions over there. They don't care what God is saying anymore. But you, if you are born again, that's not going to be a story. If you do something wrong, something's going to chew on the inside of you because it can quickly get rid of it. Repent. 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 Why? The reason is you're a new man on the inside. You're a new woman on the inside. And that's great. That's good news because... That's what the Bible calls guilt, which actually is your friend telling you to change something. And you change it with the blood of Jesus and repentance. Guilt is going to disappear. Boom! You get back in right standing. And that is good news for you, which lets you know that if you were to die any moment, you're going to go to heaven. But if you do something wrong and you don't feel guilty about it, wow, that's a bad guy, man. That, that person, if they were to die any moment, they're going to go to hell. Wow. Because they don't belong to God. The seed of the Holy Spirit is not in their hearts. Word of God talks about that in Ephesians chapter 4. When you get born again, you get included. You are marked with a seal that the Holy Spirit deposited over there. The seal of Zoe water in the womb of your spirit, which certifies that you belong to God. That's the reason being born again is important. So we're talking about being born again right now. It's the very first thing in discipleship. And if you're watching with me right now, so well, I like get born again really quickly. Just say this prayer right after me. Say, Jesus, I call you Lord. Come into my life. Save me from sins. In the name of Yahushua. Amen. You say that prayer sincerely from your heart. You're born again. That is it. Correct. It takes faith to say that. But you say that in faith, in obedience to what I just told you right now. The Father is conceived to it that your spirit is recreated. Boom. And if you dare to do that by faith, I guarantee you, you are a new man, new woman on the inside. Something, something divine just happened in your heart. Is it that simple? It is simple, but it is a miracle. It's the principle documented by the Father through the agency of the Son who created you. And he is a miracle working God. If he can make your physical body, he can recreate your spirit within the Jesus if you connect with him in faith. And that's, that's what happened right now. If you choose, 
if you chose to pray that prayer sincerely from your heart. And discipleship starts from there. Correct. But it doesn't end from there. <laughs> That's where the, the vast majority of the body of Christ is missed. It. So they're born again right now. Let's go ahead and jump back into our party boogie dance. Though, you're going to no, die back in that mode. It is possible to die back in that mood until you're born again. Why? Because the devil right now is on the outside trying to steal, trying to kill, trying to destroy. And the way he's going to do that is to push you into what we call sin and keep you trapped in it even though you're born again. And in that mood, even though you call Jesus Lord, you're still going to go to hell. So that's the reason the second part is going to be important right now. We're going to teach you how to padlock the operation of Lucifer and kick him out of your life. Right now that you're born again, teach you how to obey the word. Teach you how to adhere to the commands of your father and bask in the warmth of that. Why? Because you are a new man, a new woman in Christ Jesus. What are you talking about? All right, I'm going to break it down for you. Watch with me on the board just a little bit. So take a look at a couple of points on the board right now. So the Great Commission, which we read a few moments ago, is going to be documented in Matthew chapter 28. And it includes the discipleship of the nations. That's correct. But the discipleship of the nations will include helping people to be born again, number one, which is what we just took care of a few moments ago. But then the second part of that is not as easy. <laughs> it's what we call teaching people how to obey the word. Hallelujah. Why do we need to teach people? Well, the reason is because there is a spiritual force in the atmosphere called the spirit of disobedience, which specializes in pushing people into treason, making violation of commands from God. It specializes in that. So he's going to wait for you. Well, you think you're going to get out of my clutches by being born again? I'm going to wait for you over there. And he's going to start working together with the infrastructure of Babylon, which we talked about last week. To make it difficult for the saints of God to actually please God, even though they swear an allegiance to Jesus. How many people know that pleasing the Father goes beyond just swearing an allegiance to the Master? You can swear an allegiance to the Master and rightfully so from your heart, you really want to do things right. But it's not going to be by power, it's not going to be by might. Is going to be by the Spirit of the Lord, the agency of what the Holy Spirit is going to teach you. And that is a lot of work. There's a lot of things to learn. It's just like a little baby growing up in a house. They've got to come through elementary, and come, come through middle school, come through high school, go to college. They've got to learn a lot of things. And then people in the body of Christ say, well, you just get born again and you figure it out. No, that's not right. This, there's a spirit of disobedience in the air who wants to keep people trapped in the vortex of treason. So to outsmart, outsmart the operation of the spirit of disobedience, you've got to keep into motion a counteractive spiritual strategy. And know the word over there, he has to be spiritual strategy. Because you cannot overcome the influence of a spiritual force, a negative spiritual force, through physical ideologies. Well, I'm just gonna just I'm just gonna believe I'm gonna just stand on myself. I'm gonna try to be good. But you can't try to be good. This is not trying to be good over here. You know, it's just like you're trying to drive a car. If you're trying to drive a car, there are certain principles that will get a car moving for you. And when you get it moving for you, you know the the, 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 the yoke of moving a car and the burden is gonna be real light over there. But you say, yeah, I'm a superhuman, I'm gonna work out, you know, I'm gonna do push-ups, because I'm gonna get ready to drive a car right now. And you get inside that car and start pushing the steering for you. Say, hey, car, move for me. No, that's not the way you do this thing, man. I mean, you got to start the ignition, you pull the car in gear, release the brakes. There are lots of things you need to do to drive your car, right? You got to be taught how to drive your car. Right now, you got to be taught how to live this new life to sustain the status of perfect obedience, teaching them to obey it. If I'm not taught the spirit of disobedience and the air is going to keep my testimony absolutely negative. Thank, thankfully, glory to God, God's taught us a couple of things over there. But the spirit of disobedience is not on our shoulders in this ministry. It's underneath our feet. We keep them there. Through the status of perfect obedience. Hallelujah. Through the influence of grace and mercy. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Which we're all going to be getting started talking about. Next to by the grace of God. To push it underneath your faith. God. Because that's where it belongs. 
So that's the first reason why we got to teach it. The second reason is Yahushua himself was taught how to obey the word. The word of God says that he learned obedience through the things that he suffered. And once made, made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation to those who obey. Jesus was taught how to obey the word. Categorically, yes. Oh, but he never seen it correct. And that tells you you don't necessarily have to have seen it before you start to learn. I've given the example before. Say it's like a child growing up in a house. The child does not necessarily have to go to jail before he learns how to behave himself, be a positive contributor to the society. No. The child is growing up in a house, and you're teaching the child manners, you're teaching the child what he should do or what she should do. They're going to grow up to be perfectly normal. You know, they're not going to have to get on the negative side of the law or anything like that. Why? Because they're taught right. Well, the same thing with you. You don't, know, you don't necessarily have to get into a bad habit or negative addictions before you learn how to stay away from negative addictions. You just get taught. You get to understand, well, this is what this is going to do for you. This is what this is not going to do for you. You are here to your spiritual lessons. You're going to be a fine saint to God. That's another reason. And then the third reason which I capture on the board right now is to eliminate lukewarmness in the body of Christ. And unfortunately, what I'm talking about right now is like strange stories to the ears of the average person, the body of Christ. It's really unfortunate that what I'm talking about is strange news. And because of that, you know, what lots of people are used to hearing goes completely crosswise to what I'm talking about. And as a consequence of what they've been taught all through the years, their testimony is really disobedience rather than obedience to God. This is the testimony of the average person in the body of Christ, and that testimony makes the gospel of Jesus very unattractive right now to the unbelieving community. You tell an unbeliever that you're a Christian and you know you want to tell them something, they get automatically defensive. You know, I get treated to that numerous times over. And they come around, they start talking about all the nasty things that Christians have done already. They start talking about, you know, and they go even as far as trying to blaspheme the testimony of Yahushua or because of the testimony of the Lutheran church. church. Now, we, we, we need to clean up all that mess, and the way to do that is to get back to basics, teaching how to obey. It's not just teaching out about the, how the rapture is going to occur, teaching about how Daniel came up with his revelation, and all those random teachings in the body of Christ that people talk about that really do not matter <laughs> significantly. Yahushua was very particular in Matthew 28. Check your Bible again. Teach to obey specifically. He talked about it. He didn't say, you teach me how to get more money or teach me how to get healed. You can, I mean, you, you got to be taught how to prosper the God kind of way, taught how to get your, but fundamentally, what Yahushua recommends is teach how to obey. Can you see that? Now, the body of Christ is not going to emphasize teaching how to obey, then guess what? That's testimony in shambles. That's what we're going to see. People are not going to obey the word. Disobedience is going to be rampant, left, right, and center. Testimonies of the average person, the body of Christ is going to be like the testimony of the unbelieving community. Well, that's another reason why teaching is important. And in the process of doing all these teachings, what are we going to do? Well, we are going to identify what we call the path to negative addictions, which is going to be FDDA based on the evidence of scriptures like Titus chapter 3 and in verse 3. Uh, we talk about this every month in what we call BSGO. The word, the word of God says that we at one time were foolish disobedient, deceived, and enslaved by all kinds of passions and pleasures called addictions. And I'm sure to let know there's a path to addictions. Oh, but I've never been addicted. Well, I beg your pardon. All of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. You do not necessarily have to have done something egregious before believing that you were an addict. An addict to the pride of life, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh. That was all of us. And the quicker you realize that, the better for you so you can steer away from it forever. <laughs> of course, we were all addicted. You don't have to, have to do something egregious, outlandishly egregious before you believe that. 
Foolishness led to disobedience. Disobedience led to deception. Deception led to enslavement for all of us. Now that's what God's trying to get us out of for creating a strategy called discipleship in Matthew 28. Now how do we get out of it? Well, we identify through the revelation of the Holy Spirit in other strategy that we call the R2 strategy, R T O W, which is literally repentance, which is going to be the opposite of addictions, truth, which is going to be the opposite of deception, obedience, which is going to be the opposite of disobedience, and then wisdom right now, starting to walk in the wisdom of the righteous, which is going to be the opposite of foolishness. Well, this is what the ODP is all about. The ODP is trying to keep us in the territory of the r strategy. And most importantly for the people coming through the ODP for a number of years, your, your veterans in here, well, you are in the wisdom milestone right now. Because you, your sustained status of PO over there, you, you understand out of, out of sustained status of perfect obedience, and you're not like a heal you anymore. Um, so for the most part, and you are right now being wise. Where does this turn disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous? Because there is a wisdom. There are wisdom strategies involved in being able to sustain the status of being right with Father. That's where you are right now, the ODP by the grace of God, wisdom strategies. Now, all those wisdom strategies that we're going to be talking about, they are extensive because we captured them from the lifestyle of the wisest man who ever lived. His name is Yahushua. So at an overarching level, what are we trying to do right now? We're talking about being able to secure a seat, get entrance in the kingdom of heaven based on Matthew 7. Word of God says, not everybody will say to me, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of, kingdom of heaven, but those who uh, come uh, live to please the Father. So calling Yahushua Lord, live to please the Father, so in the status of perfect obedience is going to make you journey in the direction of going to heaven, right? So, but living to please the Father is important. How do we do that? Well, we're going to do that through wisdom strategies and the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus, which we're all going to get deeper and deeper into as we carry on with the study. So take a couple of points in here if you're taking notes. We're going to get deeper into it and talk about what 23, 2023 has to offer um, in subsequent years by the grace of God in civil form. Did you get something from it? Stay on board. Hallelujah. All right, glory to God. So that's what the Great Commission is all about. By the grace of God, it is discipleship. And it involves helping people be born again, recreated in their hearts, and then teaching them to obey. Hallelujah. So let's put some scriptures around that. So turn to Matthew chapter 1 and in verse 21 real quick. Matthew 1 and 21 tells you the reason Jesus was given that name, which was translated as Jesus, which actually a closer rendition of that name is going to be Yahushua. Matthew 1 and 21, take a look at it. It says, she will give birth to a son and you are to give him the name Yahushua. Why? Why the name Yahushua? Because he will save his people from their sins. So when you call him Jesus, Yahushua, and Jesu, Yeshua, whatever name your culture calls the Lord by, at the back of your mind, Yeshua thinking, Savior from my sins. Savior from my sins. Savior from my sins. Is the one, well, but I'm not in sin anymore. Well, Savior, that's going to keep me away from sin. <laughs> Think, let that name connect that memory back to that's the whole idea of God sending Yahushua over the year, over here on the side of eternity to teach people how to stay away from sin. Now, does that make sense why Matthew 28 is going to be written like that? Yep, he does. So the reason Jesus is going to say go teach them how to obey, not necessarily go teach them how to get their bodies healed, not necessarily teach them how to get and prosper the God can which those things are going to be important. But fundamentally, the reason Yahushua came over there is to set people free from sin. Can you see it? Can you keep them, get, deliver them from sin? Which is going to be a type of salvation. Which is what you get when you get born again. When you get born again, you get delivered from sin. Why? The reason you get delivered from sin is so you can stay away from sin. So that when you stay away from sin, you can get another salvation in the future. Which is going to be inclusive of immortality. Rapture out of here, and then finally go to heaven. And those are future modes of salvation, which you do not have right now, 
but which you will get the future. There are different modes of salvation talked about in the Bible. We're going to get deeper into all of that through the studies by the grace of God. And all this, this nuggets are important so that we can clean up the mass of Luke. Remember, that's the body of Christ. It's the reason we're talking about this. But it's very extensive. It is deep. It is thorough. That's the reason we got to get started. Savior from my sins. That's the name, meaning of the name Jesus. Or Yahushua. Hallelujah. Why? Hebrews chapter 5 and in verse 7 now lets us know that uh, Yahushua himself, I don't learn how to obey the word. Or maybe we're going to turn to that later. But let's get quickly into the scriptures for the why. Why do we need to teach people how to obey the word? I talked about the spirit of disobedience is in the air. What scripture says that? Ephesians chapter 2 real quickly. It says disobedience doesn't just happen to people. Uh... It's because there is a spiritual force in the air you breathe. Oh, the air I breathe has toxins in it, correct? Spiritual toxins called the spirit of disobedience. Uh, Ephesians chapter 1 and in verse 1 it says, As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins, in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and of the rulers of the kingdom in the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. So do you see that disobedience is going to require the inf influence of a spiritual force? And if you know something about spiritual forces, you don't try to counteract the spiritual force by philosophical ideologies. No, that means you're going to get, get beat up big time like that. you got to engage in spiritual principles and talk on purpose, spiritual principles. So identify the impact of spiritual force and cancel these operations for your life. Hallelujah. Well, those spiritual principles are what we're going to be talking about in ODP. One reason. Another reason is, is because Jesus was taught how to obey how much more the rest of us. Now, what scripture says that? Hebrews chapter 5 and in verse 7 lets us know that Yahushua himself, who was tempted in every way just because we are yet without sin, he had to learn how to obey even though he didn't sin. Hebrews 5 and 7. During the days of Yahushua's life on earth, he offered our prayers, petitions, and supplications with strong cries and tears to the one who could save his soul from death, and he was heard because he feared. And although he was a son, he learned obedience from what he suffered. Hallelujah. This is Jesus, and he had learned this thing. If you get a paper cup in the Bible, just go ahead, underline, put double stars around. <laughs> he had to learn it. This is Jesus in here. What you call, he learned how to obey, even though he did not disobey. Oh, but all the ministries are not teaching how to obey. Well, that's their business. They don't read the Bible, they don't believe it. And they are hypocrites. Because see, they claim that they are perfectly obedient and doing things that are right without necessarily adhering to the tenets of this instruction, that I am going to call them hypocrites, because they're not. You don't learn how to obey the word of God, and you want to tell me that you are obedient? You're not. You're a liar. And you can tell them that. And they try to come around and look super sophisticated by the back of their minds. Their minds full of gunk and junk over there. They got hatred and lust in their eyes. And they want to tell you that they don't, you cannot. Impossible. You got to learn it. Well, I'm not going to fall in the fire with you. I'm just going to take the word and run with it. Jesus learned how to obey the word. Come on, my humble estimation, sir. Can you teach me? That's my story by the grace of God. And what's the evidence of Jesus learning, Yahushua learning? You're going to go to Luke chapter 2 right now. In Luke chapter 2 and in verse 52, you are going to see that the evidence of Jesus learning not to obey the word of God is increase of knowledge, increase of understanding, increase of wisdom, even for the master. Look at it. Luke chapter 2 right now in verse, 20, in verse 52. And Yahushua grew in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. Can you see that evidence? So Hebrews chapter 5 says he had learned something. What's the evidence that he was learning something? Luke chapter 2 verse 52. He was growing in wisdom. So it means that there are certain wisdom strategies that Yahushua knew when he was 12 that he didn't know when he was 5. There are certain things that Jesus knew when he was 30 that he didn't know when he was 12. 
There are certain things that Yahushua knew in wisdom when he was 33, which he didn't know when he was 30. And there are certain things for information that Jesus knows right now that he didn't know 2,000 years ago. Why? Because he's still growing in wisdom. What's the evidence of that? The book of Revelation. The book of Revelation is the more detailed account of the end time events than Matthew 24. And Matthew 24 is an end time snapshot as well. But the book of Revelation had additional details in there which he didn't know on the Mount of Olives. Why? Because he kept on going. It was, the book of Revelation was given to the beloved brother John after about a hundred years of Jesus spending some time with the Father. And the Father kept on downloading additional nuggets and information to Yahushua, telling it, well, this is what I'm going to do to close the age. There's going to be silver one, silver two, silver three, silver four, silver five. So, come on. If you knew all of that in Matthew 24, you would have talked about it. But he was growing in wisdom. Growing in wisdom and stature, even though there's no disobedience. Now, if Jesus grew in wisdom, he is growing in wisdom, and will continue to grow in wisdom. Why? Because the Father, there is no end to his wisdom. Because the Father himself is growing every day. Well, what are you talking about? You're still going to break it down for you. Why should you stop? Why should you refuse to be taught? If the Father is going to be growing in wisdom, Jesus is growing in wisdom, who am I, Lana Luther, say I'm going to get stagnated because the traditions of man? Come on, cancel that understanding. I am growing in wisdom and understanding. The path of the righteous is like light shines brighter and brighter into the fullness of the day. My path's going to get super broad. I'm talking about super, super, super bright that I can see the, the, the slightest dirt on this pulpit right in there because there's so much light in my mind. That should be your story as well. Open your heart and be taught. That's important. And then secondly, um, thirdly, this is the only way we can give the Father a harvest of righteousness. The Father is wanting a harvest of righteousness so that he can release Yahushua to come back in a rapture. And his expe expectation is Matthew chapter 5 and in verse 48. It says, be perfect, therefore as your heavenly Father is perfect. His standard is be perfect in obedience, just like your heavenly Father is perfect in obedience. You've got to get it right now and sustain it. That's what we teach in this ministry. It's not something, this kind of perfection we're talking about over there is not something you're going to be getting for, looking for in the future. It's something you're going to get right now. No treason in the heart. Perfection is what he's talking about over here. There are other modes of perfection that we are going to be getting in the future and in progress. One of those things will be perfect maturity, which is going to be the stature and the fullness of Christ in stature and wisdom. But that's not this one. This one you got to get it right now. Perfect obedience for now and sustain it. Why? Well, the reason is that is a harvest the Father is looking for, significantly on the earth, so that he can download the rapture. And without that, there's not going to be any rapture. <laughs> Guys, you go to start fooling yourself. Oh, Jesus can come anytime. Well, I'm not going to force with you on that. But this is the only way we can give the Father a harvest of righteousness. Holistic discipleship, the holy way, the Father can get a harvest of righteousness. Hallelujah. And then fourthly, 2021 and the 21st century and subsequent years in civil fall will require a sustained status of PO, which we call perfect obedience, to grow your righteousness quotient for divine and supernatural exaltation. And this starts with the DNA. Why? Supernatural exaltation is going to be required to give the world an answer of peace based on the evidence of Isaiah chapter 2. Let's take a look at it in Isaiah chapter 2. It says, in the last days, in verse 2, the mountain of the Lord's temple will be established as chief among the mountains. It will be raised above the hills and all nations will stream to it. Many people will, will come and say, come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. He will teach us his ways so that we may walk in his paths. Stop. The mountain of the Lord is going to be established the chief of mountains. Why? Because the mountain of the Lord knows the ways of the Lord. So the mountain he's talking about over there is not talking about physical mountains. 
He's talking about people, you and me, who know the way of the Lord. The Bible says in the last days you are going to be raised up. Why is that raising up important for you as a mountain of the Lord? The reason is so that all nations will stream to it. It says many peoples will come and say, come let us go up to the mountain of the Lord so that he can teach us his ways. Now, I know the fullness of this is going to occur during the millennial reign of Christ, but this is establishing a pattern of how God operates. When Yahushua was here 2,000 years ago, he was the mountain of the Lord for the nation of Israel, and people stripped to him to be taught the ways of the Lord. The man child company in the 21st century will require that some experience as well, so that we can teach people the tenets of the complete gospel message, eliminate lukewarmness, the body of Christ, and people are going to be taught the ways of discipleship. How will that happen? It says the mountain of the Lord will be established as the chief of mountains. In other words, there are going to be additional mountains over here, but there is going to be a divine certification of a group of people that they are going to start getting lifted up, lifted up more than other people in their generation. Why? So that people can see divine approvals of certain people. And all this is going to start to stream to it. That's what I call accelerated supernatural exaltation. You're not going to be exalt yourself, exalt yourself by your powers, but God's going to work in circumstances through afflictions and persecutions and things going on outside over there so that you may be exalted. And so people that are going to be honest hearted and humble hearted will see that and stream over to you. Oh. But how come the Father is not doing that just here? Well, the reason the Father is hadn't done that before is because there was really no significant mountain to start with. But now in the season of Silphor, I can tell you the Father is getting ready to do something like this. Why? The reason is there is a standard of righteousness in the man child company in the earth, and that gave the Father the justification to allow the judgment of Silphor. What are examples of that? An example of that is going to be Yahushua and the nation of Israel in John chapter 15 and verse 22. Take a look at that. Take a look at that scripture right here. So the nation of Israel didn't have, God didn't have the justification to allow the devastation of AD 70 after Yahushua left over here to occur to the nation of Israel. If there was no standard for them to see, and that they rejected. Now look at it. John chapter 15 and in verse 22. It says, If I had not come and spoken to them, they would not have been guilty of sin. Now, however, they have no excuse for their sins. He who hates me hates my father as well. If I had not done among them what no one else had done, they would not be guilty of sin. But now they have seen those miracles and yet they've hated both me and my father. So what Jesus is talking about over there is that I came around and started teaching you guys all those things that you had never heard of before. In addition to that, God backed up his teachings with all these miracles that you never seen before and yet you still hated me. Well, because of that, you're going to, be, you're going to get, get beat up big time. There is going to be significant afflictions Escalated in your story, the nation of Israel, because you rejected my testimony. Now, we can take that as a principle, which we are going to see that that's a, a repeating occurrence in the way God deals with humanity, especially with relationship between prophetic and the rest of the people. Now, take that as a pattern right now that God's going to get somebody who's going to be talking about what nobody else has talked about before. When he's trying to make a change, he's trying to, God is trying to peeve up to something else. You know, the body of Christ has been going a certain direction over here, and all of a sudden, God's going to give somebody one revelation that's going to be crosswise to everybody's revelation. <laughs> that's the way the Father does it. Look at Jeremiah. Look at Isaiah. Look at Ezekiel. And of course, Yahushua himself. Look at the, uh, the, the, the time of Enoch. Somebody's going to rise up, and it's going to say something completely crosswise <laughs> to the mainstream philosophy. But well, that's what God is getting ready to do. So now, in the body of uh, 2,000 years ago, God raised up Yahushua to start talking about things that the Pharisees have never heard of before. 
If we should start challenging the traditions of man in their hearts, start challenging the tradition of hand washing, start challenging traditions about the Sabbath, every tradition over there, who should just knock it down. And there were supernatural actions backing off everything that Jesus was talking about over there, there's miracles left around the center. Now, because of that, God's expectation was you guys are going to teach your traditions and follow the ministry of Jesus. But if they don't do that, then there is going to be afflictions and persecutions and plagues and all of that. And that's what happened in AD 70. Now, we can reverse engineer that in our generation. Now, we see in the 21st century an escalation of challenges, to say the least about it. What you can call pestilences and plagues, medical plagues, societal plagues, people losing their minds, economic challenges, financial challenges. So we're over here right now. Why? The reason is there is a standard in the, in the earth. And that gave God the justification of allowing the challenges, which we call civil war, which we talked about two weeks and three weeks ago in end time snapshot. That's the reason we can say that. Now, this standard of righteousness in the earth, which is the man-child company, gave the Father the justification of allowing the challenges of civil war. And that's consistent with the experience of what happened to, between Yahushua and the nation of Israel. Joshua and Caleb versus the rest of the spies, the nation of Israel, Numbers 14. Jeremiah and the rest of Israel. Elijah, even during the time of Ahab. Now, supernatural exaltation is going to be required to, inf to outsmart the influence of, of Babylon and to give the world an answer of peace. So when God says, well, there are some people on the earth who are giving me, you know, perfect obedience. They're trying to challenge the lukewarmness of their generation. Well, all right. Tighten the noose up on that yonder place of the planet that we call over there. <laughs> That's what God said. Go tighten the noose on that. I'm going to send them plagues and challenges. They're not going to figure out with the medical science. Go tighten. Why? Because God knows there are some people over here doing things right. So if the rest of you are not going to do things right now, we'll smack you. Go ahead and do that. Well, now, God, the Father, is a Father of love. So he's not saying, I'm going to smack this generation with all kinds of plagues and pestilence and challenges just because it's trying to be mean hard. And I'm going to ring your nose because you guys are not talking to me. No, it's an action of love. The reason he is, he wants people to be pressured to start asking questions. Seeking for answers. Asking questions that will lead them to discover the people who have the answer, which is the man-child company. Now, the man-child company, because they're in the earth, they're not supernaturally exalted just yet. Their prominence is really minuscule in the planet. The popular people that we have in the body of Christ right now, they are the loud mouths, preachers of lukewarmness. They don't know anything. And they hold the key to knowledge. Unfortunately, what's the meaning of the key to knowledge? They own, they own the infrastructure to the ears of people. They're on the TV, they're the people that people know, you know, social media algorithms are favoring their posts and all this. They, and they, they are just like empty shells, empty barrels. They don't know nothing. <laughs> they know nothing. I can say that categorically. Why? Because of their testimonies. You don't need to snoop in on their library and see what they're jotting down. No, just look at their testimonies over there. Shambles, shambles, shambles. It means, well, what you're talking about. No, you know nothing. But then the man child company has an answer right now. They're not, no, nobody knows it. They are under a bushel. So what's the father going to do? Well, the father's going to take them outside from under the bushel, plus them on the bushel, so the world can see and start to exalt them, so people can stream to them and give the world an answer of peace. That's the reason we can say prophetically, that in the 21st century and going forward, what God is getting ready to do is accelerated supernatural exaltation from a man child company. Why? For the purpose of love. So that they can give the world an answer of peace. And that's going to happen. It's not going to happen overnight, but God's getting ready to do it. Now, what's my position in all of this? So I'm going to be a saint in the 21st century, and I understand that God's getting ready right now to supernaturally exalt, and he's actually started, but in small pockets of things over there. 
I want to make sure I, I, I seize, I take my place, and I save my seat as part of the MCC. We call it the Manchild Company. And women are included as well, so it's not just exclusively. There is no male or female in Christ Jesus. You're a woman man. <laughs> How about that? Woman child company, woman man, man child company. doesn't matter. But man, MCC, you're part of it. So I'm going to make sure I keep my seat as part of MCC. And what's going to make me keep, help me to keep my seat as part of MCC is understand what we talked about before, discipleship. Because the man child company is going to be tracking after the testimony of Yahushua. So, following after the discipline and the lifestyle of Yahushua is the way to keep my seat as part of the MCC. And that's going to start with the discipleship teachers we start talking about today called different negative addictions. And we talk about often what negative addictions are. The reason people get negative addicted, negatively addicted, the path to negative addictions and how to come out of it by the grace of God. What are addictions? Addiction is going to be anything that enslaves people, which is going to be inclusive of two categories of addictions. You've got positive addictions and negative addictions. And the way to actually steer away from negative addictions is to be positively addicted to something. In other words, I, if I don't want to be addicted to sin, I want to be addicted to righteousness. Which scripture says that? Romans chapter 6 and verse 15. Let's take a look at it real quick. And we start to understand and unravel some of those wisdom strategies that will keep us in the territory of righteousness with this message by the grace of God. Romans 6 and 15. Take a look at it. What then shall we sin because we are not under the law but under grace? By no means. Don't you know that when you offer yourselves... To someone to obey him as slaves, you are slaves to the one you obey, whom you obey, whether you are slaves to sin, which leads to obedience, or to obedience, which leads to righteousness. So you can be a slave to obedience as well, correct? And that's the reason we can say that. What are the reasons that people get addicted to negative things over there, search for entertainment outside of the kingdom of God? 2 Timothy chapter 3 says in the last days there are going to be lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. And that's what's prevalently outside. So they are trying to get rest for their souls by entertainment on the outside. And they're trying to do this and go over there and try to compensate for their refusal to follow after the discipline of the Messiah. There is no rest outside of the discipline of the Messiah. You're just going to be beating, beating the bush and run around dancing in circles. You're going to come back to square one. You're going to do all those so-called fun and nice things to do. And you still come back. There is no rest in your soul. Because rest is a function of what we know in this ministry as incense. That's the reason Jesus can sleep in a boat in a hurricane. Go try that. <laughs> They shoot fireworks to close to your house, you get startled because well, you don't have enough incense in your mind to make you sleep properly. Well, Yahushua's going to sleep through it all <laughs> if he wants to sleep. Why? Because there's rest in his soul. And a million and one entertainments and fun and roller coaster wouldn't give you that experience. Well, that's the reason we're searching after this right here, guys. Trying to track after the life of Jesus. How can I get rest from my mind? My will, my emotions, rest for my soul is in the lifestyle of Yahushua, the person who can do that. It makes logical sense for us to come learn from Jesus. <laughs> Search for entertainment outside the kingdom of God to compensate for my refusal to want to follow after the discipline of Yahushua. Will be a slippery crack into negative addictions. This leads to believing a lie, which is a major milestone toward negative addictions. And the devil intends to recruit people to serve his objective to create a kingdom that will not be subject to God, but he will fail. Why? Because of the increase of God's kingdom, there is no end. And also Satan intends to usurp the believer's authority to hold sway in the second heavens and to delay God's plans. That's the reason he's trying to push people with negative addictions over there. You guys refuse to be taught, refuse to learn, stay in your sin. Why? Because I am going to hold territories in the realm of the spirit 
so I can cause chaos on the side of eternity. That's what he does for a living. <laughs> Sins, treasons, negative addictions will truncate one's life's been on the earth. Learn how to come out of negative addictions by the grace of God. Steer far away from anything related, remotely close to treason. It's a new year. It's a new start. Start afresh. Hallelujah. What's the path to it? Titus chapter 3 and in verse 3. What does this have to do with accelerated supernatural exaltation? Everything in between the lines. Learning how to sustain the status of perfect obedience is the only way the Father is going to supernaturally exalt you. And to sustain the status of perfect obedience, you've got to learn how to stay farther and farther away from treason. Farther and farther away from a violation of God's commandments to you. Farther and farther away from it. That's the reason we're talking about this. Now Titus chapter 3 and verse 3 says, At one time we two were foolish. Underline that. Disobedient. Deceived and enslaved by all kinds of passion. Can you see over there? So enslavement doesn't just start at being enslaved, he starts with foolishness. So, so, so there's a path to it. Foolishness, disobedience, deception, and enslavement, or what we call addiction. We call it FDDA. But, but through the revelation of the Holy Spirit, we identify another path out, and that's the reason we drew that chart over there on the board, and it's going to need your study notes over there. So if I understand and I identify the opposite of each milestone, I can't walk my way out of it. And it's going to start with understand the opposite of addiction is going to be repentance. Understand the opposite of deception is going to be truth. Understand the opposite of disobedience is going to be obedience. And then opposite of foolishness is going to be wisdom. We call that the art of strategy. It's going to be your study notes as well. So... How do we start and keep ourselves on this journey? Well, the, the, the first part of this journey is to understand the repentance milestone, making sure that there's nothing blocking your right standing relationship with the Lord. And repentance is not condemnation. It is a couple of strategies using scriptures like 1 John 1, 9 and Hebrews 9, 13 and 14, which will be inclusive of God's first move of conviction, conviction of the Holy Spirit, to give you seeing eyes, man's move, which is going to be inclusive of responding in honesty, humility, and faith, and then God's final move to heal, remove guilt from your spirit, and move towards repairing your circumstances. We call it God's move, man's move, and God's final move. We're going to be delving in detail into all of that and the middle study on the word. And then crying out to God for grace and mercy to change, to overcome deception. So when I repented right now in milestone number one, I say, Father, I realize that this particular thing in my life is detestable. I'm not going to cover it up. I'm not going to say, well, this is not a sin because I can't see the Ten Commandments. Ten Commandments is what I'm just going to call sin. Uh, anything that, you know, the devil is using to tag my testimony, which God is talking to me about, I'm going to suppress it. Well, the first action of treason... <laughs> had not, nothing to do, in quote, with the Ten Commandments. Think about that. The first action of treason was just a simple violation of an instruction. What's the instruction to them? Do not eat from the street. And they went ahead and disobeyed that. God said, well, I'm going to cast you out right now. We started our string of chaos because of that. So in the Father's mind, sin is not just going to be relegated to what's documented in Exodus chapter 20 as the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments uh, is just to give you a frame of mind of how God thinks with regards to his instructions, which you are going to see that all actions of treason are going to be found in Ten Commandments, directly or indirectly. But fundamentally, you've got to understand it's a violation of God's instructions to you. So when God's telling me over there to love God and love people, and I choose to say I'm a horrible hatred in my heart, well, that's going to be a sin that I've got to repent for. Hallelujah. Well, repentance is just a sin, as easy as saying, well, Father, I, I realize it's a sin right now, and I confess it. And I de determine in my heart, I'm not going to do it again, Father, please forgive me. You pray that prayer sincerely over there, God's going to forgive you. <laughs> Why? Because he's interested in promoting righteousness in your life, not necessarily interested in punishing you. No. He wants to get rid of sin. But what the Father judges sometimes correct. Even if he judges, his judgment is to 
give you the mnemonic that you need to sustain the status of righteousness for the future. He thinks in terms of righteousness, not necessarily in terms of negative judgment or positive judgment. The Father is like that. His purpose, his objective is righteousness. You repent right now, he forgives. Oh, but I'm still feeling guilty in my heart. Well, that's the next thing you got to do. you got to believe. 1 John 1, 9. Hebrews 9, 13 and 14. If we say we have no sins, we deceive ourselves. The truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You believe that scripture? You turn to Hebrews chapter 9. If the blood of bulls and goats will purge the flesh of those who offer it. How much more shall the blood of Christ purge our conscience from bad works so we can serve the living God? You need your conscience purged of dead works so you can serve the living God. You put your faith in that scripture. You say, Father, please cleanse me. I receive cleansing by the blood. Right now, guilt is going to disappear from your spirit. It's like magic. We talked about that yesterday at BSGO. Milestone number one, repentance. Less than 30 seconds. And that's my recommendation. Why? Because if you fall into treason, you stay in treason. If you were to die in that mood, you're going to go to hell. I don't care how many times you call it Jesus Lord. You harbor treason in your heart. There is no place for treason in God's heavens. And you don't necessarily have to wait until you backslide, in quote. Well, but I'm not backsliding right now because I'm still calling Jesus Lord when you refuse to repent. No, we don't tolerate that. Less than 30 seconds. Something chews in your heart. If I'm not judge myself, I'm, come on, I repent of it. You are the judge. You are the forgiven. You are the acquitted. In the name of Jesus, I will receive my in less than 30 seconds. You get rid of it. Don't play around with treason. Quickly, quickly, you get why? Because you want to make sure <laughs> you go to heaven. <laughs> Glory to God. Milestone number one. Now, milestone number two coming out of FDDA is going to be overcoming deception. Which is going to be truth, which will cancel out the lies that I believe. So the reason people go multiple times over into addictions and coming out and repent, and when I repent today, next next we're going to repent. And the reason is because they believe a lie somewhere, and until they unearth that lie with the surgical operation of the truth of the Holy Spirit, there is going to be a recursive repentance. Sin and repentance. Sin and repentance. God's going to tolerate that for as long as you want. <laughs> Until you have no more inheritance. You're going to give them to good repentance, repentance. Why? Because you believe a lie somewhere. So that's the reason this milestone is important. And then we identified a couple of nuggets in here on page number 11, which are truth nuggets, which you can use to start your journey in the direction of RTOW. Uh... A lie or a deception is going to be equivalent to truth plus distortion. So truth is going to be equivalent to deception minus distortion. So let's take this example here. So a lie is going to be incomplete truth, for example. Somebody believe that simply calling Jesus Lord is going to make me go to heaven. There's, there's a truth in that, but it's incompleteness makes it a lie. Why? Because Matthew chapter 7 and verse 21 to 23 says, Not everyone who says to the Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only he will live to please my Father. So it's important to call Yahushua Lord, but in addition to that, you've got to make sure, make sure you live to please the Father. Now that's the complete truth that's going to take me to heaven. Now if I believe that, it's going to be difficult for the devil to whisper lies into my ears in a moment of pressure or temptation. Because if I don't believe that, then it's going to tell you, well, you know, you go ahead and you do that then, you know, you bask in the warmth of immorality in your mind or the pride of life or lost the, fight, lost the flesh, lost the highs. After all, you say Jesus is Lord. Come on, you're in your way to heaven. When Yahushua says, if you look at somebody lawfully, you've already sinned in your heart. Yahushua says that if you harbor hatred in your heart, you've already sinned in your heart. God's standard is at the heart level. What, what, what's creeping into your will that you've decided you want to do? Oh, but I got junk thoughts in my mind. Well, are you taking those thoughts or are you casting them down? If you take those thoughts and you start to process those thoughts, that's where you sink. But if thought were to come into your mind, you say, no, that's not me. I resist you. I say, I cast you out of here. You haven't seen it. 
My thoughts are things that are true, honorable, just, pure, lovely, of good report, that's just the praise. Anything that's not like that, man, I get me offensive, man, and start casting down, breaking, breaking the hole of the devil. Why? Because you're not going to push me down over there. Glory to God. So you get rid of it. With this complete truth right now, it's going to cancel that lie. The devil doesn't have a platform anymore to whisper lies into your ears to keep you down into the negative milestone. That's lie number one and truth number one. Another truth nugget that we found is patience is in you and can't outlast the tests and trials of the enemy. The devil may come and try to tell you, well, tests and trials will last forever. Impossible. Tests and trials were not designed to last forever. They are time-boxed activity. Why? Because the Father wants to bring the gold in you, and the Father is in the fire together with you. So there's no way tests and trials can last forever. Well, the devil wants to make you believe that so you can give up your resistance of it. <laughs> but when I believe that there's patience in me, based on the evidence of Galatians chapter 5 and verse 22, I got the seed of love on the inside of me. Love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, patience on the inside of me is going to cancel the lies of the enemy, which says my story will not end. Lie number three yielding to the pressure of the devil will make it stop. That's a lie. Oh, but I get momentary relief when I yield to the pride of life. It makes me feel better. When I yield to the loss of the highs, it makes me feel better. When I yield to the loss of the flesh, it makes me feel better. No. Because yielding to it, to that pressure, is an invitation for greater and bigger pressure in your tomorrow. Why? Because there's no peace for weakening. So when you, you yoke yourself together with the adversary, even though you may get momentary relief, fleeting pleasure as a consequence of that, your tomorrow is going to be bigger pressure. So how do I get permanently free over there? Resist the devil. Submit to the Lord. Resist the devil. He's going to flee away from you. Oh, when I'm resisting the devil, it takes a lot of work. Correct. In that mode of resisting, the devil is going to give way because he doesn't have a testimony of sticking through forever. He can't. Look at what happened to Yahushua in the wilderness of temptation. The devil tempt, tempted Yahushua one time and two times and three times. And he gave up on that craft. Yahushua got his peace back. He got his crown back. The devil tucked his tail in between his, his knees and went away from him. Why? That's who he is. He's an impatient devil. <laughs> He can't stand through forever. But you got a patient God on the inside of you, and you can use that force of patience to outlast the test and the trials of the enemy. Fixate on the truth. Cancel the lies. Stay free from addictions. Hallelujah. And all the while we're here is the blood of Jesus will completely undo the effect of past of his deed. There's a truth in that. But the blood of Yahushua was designed to neutralize guilt from the, from the conscience. Not to rectify negative afflictions and circumstances. So if I believe in the blood of Jesus, what I need to do every time, well, go ahead and plead the blood. What about the circumstances that get jacked up right now because of my actions of treason? What about the blessings that are getting ready to be returned back to the heavenlies because of my treason? God's going to forgive. He's going to wipe your conscience clean, but those blessings are going to turn back right now. You're going to have to obey the word, seize subsequent opportunities to practice obedience right now, to inherit the mode of the life of God, which will cancel the flesh of your circumstances. That's the complete truth of the word. Now, when I believe those truths of the word, deceptions are going to start getting canceled in my mind, just like that. We talk about this on purpose in B.S. Steel every month. When I get details out, make sure you connect to B.S. Steel. So that's milestone number two. And then milestone number three is going to be right now seizing opportunities to practice obedience. God's going to allow circumstances to get orchestrated in temptations, in persecutions, and afflictions, not because he's trying to kill you, but it's just because he's trying to give you an opportunity to retrieve the inheritances that I traded for the loss of the flesh, the loss of the eyes, the pride of life, at the mind level and thought level, and potentially uh, the conduct level. God's going to let that old thing come back again. And until you pass that test, you're not leaving this mountain, bro. <laughs> you're going to keep on going around that circle. Why? Because the Father's inheritance is at stake. 
It's going to keep coming back. Oh, but I hate to be under that pressure. Well, it's a good thing to be under that pressure because you don't develop muscles, spiritual stamina, except there's a pressure on you. So what do I do then when there's pressure on me? Well, what you do is Hebrews chapter 4 in verse 50. In a moment of temptation and pressure, what you're meant to do is to be asking God for grace and mercy. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may find grace to help and mercy for our failures in a time of need. When that pressure is coming on you under your breath, you see, Father, please give him grace and mercy to stand. It's not going to be by power. It's not going to be by might. It's by your spirit. Say, the Lord, Father, give him grace right now. I have internal energy and circumstantial arrangements to make it difficult for the dead to trick me to treat me, Father, grace and mercy. That should be your frame of mind when you are going through temptations, when you are going through pressure, when your emotions are getting amplified and excited and things the devil is telling you this testing is not going to last, it's going to last forever. Ah, this is who I am right now. Ah, he's yelling at you. <laughs> Greater is the force of grace on the inside of you if you dare to ask. Well, but why can't just God give me grace just like that? No. Grace is not designed to work like that. Grace is designed to work for the humble. And the greatest show of humility is when you ask God for it in your time of pressure. That's monster number three. And when you do that, there's been grace in your heart. All of a sudden, you say, well, I can beat this guy. And I'm not going to do this anymore because greater is he that's in me that needs to sit and catch you and get out of here. And then you're going to see circumstances going to start getting rearranged right now. All of a sudden, there's going to be a phone call from a friend or something like that. Oh, there's going to be uh, the potatoes about to burn. Go ahead and check your potatoes over there. Oh, there's going to be something you're going to do work to distract your mind away from that pressure so you can overcome that pressure, quickly get your inheritance, and now you're in obedience. Glory to God. And the more obedient you are, the easier it is to get obedient. The easier it is to sustain the status of perfect obedience in that mode. You sustain the status of perfect obedience in that mode. Your RQ starts to grow. You are securing your seeds from that man-child company who is getting ready to be supernaturally exalted in this season. <laughs> Master number three, really important. And then number four right now, there is no pressure on me anymore. Well, I got to make sure I stay wise. That's what we call wisdom. You are going to start to identify and start to walk in the lifestyle and the discipline of Yahushua. So that you can stay free and far away from treason and negative addictions. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride. I'm going to stay free and far. A thousand miles away from it, two thousand miles away from it, five thousand, what are you talking about? I'm super far from it. Not in my power, but in the wisdom of the lifestyle and the discipline of Yahushua. That is the reason for the ODP. <laughs> Glory to God. How many people got something from it? That's week number one, DNA, defeating negative addictions by the grace of God. We're going to start pressing all these wisdom strategies subsequently. To steer clear away from anything that can clip your destiny. Because <laughs> how many people know that, thank God, the rapture hasn't occurred right now? What are you talking about? Yep. Because if the rapture were to occur right now, lots of us wouldn't go. Me inclusive. Oh, how can you say that? Why? Because I don't have the ODR just yet. And the caliber of people that God is going to be expecting to rapture out of here are going to be the people like the church in Philadelphia with the ODR. So I don't fool myself. <laughs> but I'm working in the direction of ODR. I got a quarter ODR, half ODR, three quarters ODR. I'm moving that direction. But it's not full ODR yet. Why? Because that's there's not enough significant practice. There's not enough practice in sustained status, status of PO. That's the reason you can't afford to be a yo-yo. You get an O, you get half open door RQ over there, and then you lose the game. You move two steps forward and two steps backward, two steps forward and two steps. You stay like that 20 years down the road, you're not going to be eligible for the next rapture. You're going to be here with the second man chart company. And the Antichrist catches you in that mode say, hey, you listen to the ODP for the next twenty for the past twenty years, you're still missed out the rap. It's gonna come ring your nose big time, man. They go they're gonna put pressure on you. 
That's the reason that there is no way out of what I'm talking about. You got to make sure you sustain the status of people, make it your core occupation. This is my duty in here. I design my schedules, everything around me. I'm thinking about what's going to make it easy for me to stay and sustain the status of P.O. Oh, wow. P.O., what's the meaning of that? Perfect obedience is what we call it. In other words, delighting in God's commands. In my heart, there is no tolerance for God, just give me a break a little bit. No, no, I don't think like that. Uh, praise the name of If I find myself thinking I'm going to slap myself real big time, say, come on, you don't pull my ears. You don't think like that? Why? But uh, everybody thinks like that. Well, that's their business. <laughs> and God tell them this. I'm saying, I got, God, give me a break. I'll catch you tomorrow. No, no, you don't talk like that. No. When the Father says something, you say, yes, sir, I rejoice in your commands. Father, what can I do for you? That should be your mode. Now, what's going to put you in that mode is a couple of wisdom strategies that we call the discipline of the master. Because it's not going to be by power. It's not going to be, again, by might. It's going to be by the resources of the Spirit of the Lord. Predominantly putting incense in your mind and circumstances in your body. You're going to be godly. You're going to be in that mode. And you all know because you've been through the ODP where we're going to press this thing harder this year. By the grace of God. You've got to sustain the status of PO. You've got to grow your righteousness quotient because we need it so you can be exalted. And we need your exaltation so you can cancel lukewarmness significantly by the grace of God and the body of Christ starting from this year and going forward by the grace of God and it starts what we call DNA. Now for the people watching with us right in here, what I talked about is going to be in this book called The Fig Negative Addictions. It's available, I believe, on Amazon and purchased over there. Uh, if you send us an email, you want to get a PDF version of it, I can send it to you free of charge. Uh, but Amazon is not going to give it to you free of charge because they don't care. Says, well, but uh, my name is uh, Born Again. I need you to give it that. They don't think like that. That's the reason it's got to be sold. <laughs> but if you can't afford $8 or something like that to buy, well, I can send you a PDF version of it. So <laughs> get it. The Feed and Negative Addictions, you're going to see over there all those details of FDDA and RTOL strategy and all this. You're going to see over there right on Amazon by the grace of God. So this is week number one of 2023 ODP. Did you get something from it? I sure hope so. Uh, but as my costume is, I ain't going to lie to officially right now connect people with the Lord. We may not know the Lord, or we may not know the Lord and fallen away from the Father's uh, good books, so to say. Well, this is your chance to reconnect with the Father. It's a new year. It's a new start. Let's start all over again. It doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter what you've done. God is reaching out to you. There is healing for your life today. There is healing for your life today. It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter where you've been. God is reaching for your life today. I do not care what you've done. I don't care how many times you've fallen. You can come back home. The Spirit of the Lord is reaching out to you, right? And says, come home. Come back home because you were mine. You were purchased by the precious blood of the Lamb. Come home and stay where you are. I'm going to read Matthew chapter 7, verse 21 to you, right? And it says, not everyone who says to the Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. But only he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name drive out demons and perform many miracles? Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoers. This passage of scripture lets us know that there are going to be two things that are going to be categorically important to make it over to the kingdom of heaven. Calling Yahushua, Lord, live and please the Father. And I want to help you to get started right now. Get a new start. It's a new year for a new start. You like to get started? I'm going to ask you, please pray this prayer right after me. Say, Yahushua, 
I realize that I've been a sinner. Living by my wits and powers. Refusing to call you Lord. Calling myself my own Lord. Doing as I please, not necessarily as you please. I repent of this Lord. And I ask you to forgive me. I call you Lord. Master. Boss and Savior. Please save me from my sins. I believe. That you died. And you were resurrected. To save me from my sins. Please save me. Give me a new heart. To please the Father. And I thank you. For saving me. From this moment forward. With your grace and mercy. I will live. To please the Father. And make heaven my home. Thank you for saving me. I am. Born again. In the name of Yahushua. Amen. Amen, amen. Glory to God. Congratulations. Welcome to God's family. If you pray that prayer with me, you are born again. If any man is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Welcome to God's family. I'm really excited. The host of heaven, we're cheering for you right now. Welcome home. Congratulations. Now, if you pray that prayer with me, you will do me an absolute honor if you let me know about it. Because I want to send you these resources. You know, some of these resources that we talked about, I'm going to send it to you free of charge. And all you need to do is just to send us an email about it. Inquiry at HeroSmart.com. That's the email. You let me know about it. I'll send you this resource, these resources free of charge. You post it, post it, paying by the grace of God, the best my ability. I'll send it to you free of charge. So let us know about it. So you made a decision to connect with the Lord, you got born again, listening to this, or something like that. We will send resources to you free of charge. Welcome to God's family. Congratulations, my brothers, my sisters of the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, for the rest of our friends and families who may want to take a copy of the study notes in the morning, I am going to step away from the screen for just a few uh, moments, about 10 seconds precisely. I'll give you an opportunity to take a copy of the study notes in the morning, and I'll be back. Still on board, we're just getting started right now with a new star, new star, new year, fresh start. Hallelujah. Please come back next week because we're going to be talking about more things that are wisdom strategies to keep you in the righteous plan. Until that time, remember God cares about you and so do you. Yahushua is Lord, stay blessed. Amen.